It is a privilege to be here today as we honor those who died in service to our great nation. It is altogether just for us to take a moment to reflect on why we honor our fallen heroes. The most commonly understood reason of this why in regard to Memorial Day is to honor, honor the sacrifice paid by the individuals who gave their life in defense of our country. And it is indeed rightly so that we do this. As Christ taught us, no greater love than, no one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. And since these fallen heroes gave this ultimate gift, it is right and just for, for us to pay them homage. That being said, it is also critical we take time today to reflect on this why in a greater sense as to the purpose of these hero sacrifices. It is one thing to recognize that these sacrifices mattered in their own day, and it is entirely a different thing to understand the greater cause which unite these sacrifices to us as we stand here today. So what is it? What is this unifying bond, this principle worth dying for, that connects the fallen from our war of independence up to our common era? There must be something unique to our American experiment, which has held our society together for the last 247 years. Many nations have come and gone during our history. Some have fallen from external forces, but it is more often a fall caused from within. There is a false sense in America today that we will just automatically continue to carry on as a nation throughout time. However, our experience tells us otherwise. There is no guarantee. Hard work and sacrifice are needed for a nation to carry on, but there is also something deeper that is needed. G.K. Chesterton once noted, men did not love Rome because she was great. She was great because they had loved her. When Rome had finally fell, it was not a culminating battle, but rather the gates of an apathetic Rome were open to the barbarians without contest. The flame of admiration and unity in Rome had extinguished, and with it extinguished its soul. In remembering those who have died before us, we recognize how they fanned the flame of freedom through time, and it is up to us today to keep that flame alive. We must recognize the immense sacrifices were not the result of mere individuals blindly obeying orders. That might work for some nations in some eras, but that type of motivation and purpose does not long endure. Something beyond following orders is needed for such a great extent of sacrifice over such a long period of time. There must be a genuine belief or ideal held among these heroes which connects, which connects them. The great 18th century British parliamentarian and political thinker Edmund Burke once described society as a contract that goes beyond conventional partnership agreements which can be changed or demolished at will. He said society becomes a partnership between those that are living, those that are dead, and those who are to be born. In essence, those who have died in defense of our country throughout history died not only fighting the, fighting the enemy of their day, but in order to preserve what would Burke would describe as an eternal society. How can we decipher what this eternal society might be, one may ask? One need only look at our Declaration of Independence to find the answer. These fragmented 13 colonies who banded together to form a United States did so in order to dissolve our political bonds with Britain so that the people of this great nation, that they may, as was poetically stated, assume the powers of earth, or assume among the powers of earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and nature's God entitle them. And just to avoid all future possibility of doubt as to what these laws of nature and nature's God actually mean in practice, our founders gave us one of the most profound and well-known sentences of all world history. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that among them, or that we hold, <laughs> we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This is the American ideal that our fallen paid so great a price to keep aflame. 
It is this exact sec sentiment which, gave, which is given in what is undoubtedly the greatest speech in American history. On November 19th, 1863, a crowd had gathered to hear a eulogy from President Abraham Lincoln. Four months earlier on this site occurred a great battle at Gettysburg, where roughly 50,000 soldiers died in a matter of three days. As our battle-weary republic struggled through years and loss of suffering caused by war, a war which was paid in atonement for the sin of slavery, President Lincoln summarized our ideal for which those died in the battle had fought, and he encouraged a struggling nation to stay the course. Lincoln's address culminated with words that echo through time. He said, from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth in freedom, and that the government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from the earth. These words of Lincoln resonate now as much as any time before us. We all have a choice to make. Do we keep the flame of liberty and the love of country alive in our hearts, or do we let it fade away? Will we let fade our inheritance, which is our traditions, passed down through wisdom and experience, or will we hold fast to our American ideal? God bless you all. God bless the fallen that we remember today, and may God bless the United States of America.